Lady Lily back with another video. And child, I just been all over the freaking place. I swear it's like non stop. Um a lot has happened since I last um shot um my last video. Um so yeah, this is a random wave video by the way. So um Good thing the Cubs won the World Series. I remember the last um, few videos I shot, uh, one of them I had a Cubs hat on. They actually did lose that game, but they came back in Game 7 and they won the World Series. So, of course, being from the Windy City, of course, Chicago went crazy. Uh, it's, a, it's been a good time in terms of that... Um, that victory they had the parade i didn't go to the parade but i watched it on tv and it was just simply awesome so happy for them i am a south sider i am a white Sox fan but i'm also a chicago fan so i say i support um any championship that comes to this great city but yeah so a lot has went on um the purpose of this video i just wanted to it's just, you know, express some feelings, thoughts about this past election. Um, first of all, I did work the election as an election coordinator. Um, so my role is to make sure that the machines are being ran, are being not only set up and that they are uh, running properly and maintained throughout the election. And then it was also my job to shut the machines down as well as transport the results um, to the headquarters once we were transmit, not transport, transmit the results to the reporting headquarters once we were done. Um, so this was my first presidential election. So I guess I wasn't really used to the, the nonstop consistency because all the other elections have been the primary or elections for the mayor or the runoff for the mayor. So it's um, probably been elections that were less intense. But nevertheless, um, my election day experience, uh, people were lined up ready to go at 6 p.m. And we were busy, from, I mean 6 a.m. And we were busy from 6 a.m. until we had people still in line at 7 p.m. And the rule is for voting, if they are in line before 7 p.m., you have to continue to let, um, let them vote. So we did. So with the elections, I got home. I was just mentally drained because it was busy because people were still able to register to vote and vote. So that was an added step that I was also responsible for. So that was great. Um, I think in the area I work, which is mostly... Um, Black and Latino, uh, we have a few um, Caucasians still in the area, but mostly um, of the Polish descent. But we just had a good consistence of people voting, all races, ages. So I thought that was great. Now, the outcome of this whole race did not go as planned. You all know that Trump was declared um, the president-elect for the United States. Um, I pretty much knew it was a wrap before they call it a wrap. Um, by the time Donald Trump got up to about 250-something votes, and I think Hillary might have been at like 209, I knew it was a wrap. I went to bed, woke up. Yeah, I didn't I didn't foresee the miracle taking place. But I was just really I felt like the aftermath was just crazy. Um like the next day it was just like doom and gloom. Um went to work. First of all, nobody in my office spoke of the election. Nobody. And if they did, they didn't do it around me. But the most I mean, I talked to one of my coworkers about it. Um but other than that, it was really hush hush. It was it was kind of quiet, kind of quiet, little sad, little gloomy. I mean, at my class met that same day, and we did like a diversity activity, which was kind of fitting, 
because we feel like, you know, America's at odds right now in terms of race relations and various things that's going on. And uh, I had a good, healthy discussion with my class about the election and, you know, who they voted for. You know, I told people, if you voted for Trump, you know, I'm not going to look at you odd or look at you weird or, you know, ridicule you. Um, so, you know, I think for the most part, that Wednesday class was pretty much Team Hillary. Um, now, my... Um, Friday class was a mixture. We had a, a few, um, couple of students that did say they vote for Trump. And then majority of the class was with Hillary. And what I end up did not liking what took place, and I had to shut the conversation down, was the students asking this person, oh, your parents must be rich. Where do you live at? Blah, 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 blah. And the young man was saying, you know, my parents, you know, gets up. They go to work every day. They're the working class. Um... You know, but the guy was like, do you own the, your home? And he said, yeah, well, see, they own a home. And I said, well, you can't say that because, you know, my parents, you know, were are working class. Well, my dad's retired. My mom still work, but my parents is of working class and they own their home. So you can't, you know, look at that. And I'm like, the guy who was complaining to the other guy was like, I mean, you live in a nice known suburb. So you can't say one's rich or whatever. Me, personally, I did vote for Hillary. My rationale is that I was voting someone who had some political experience. I felt like the President of the United States should be one who has been through the political process, who have, you know, went through the trenches, that, you know, kind of know how this whole political aspect of government works. Um, that was my, that's, that's why I voted for Hillary, because she's been there. Um, she's worked the levels of government. She is a former first lady. Um, she saw her husband do the work within the White House. So she had a gist of, you know, the political, you know, political running, per se. Um, Trump, what have we known Trump for? Just mostly TV you know, how much money he had, and yeah, so I mean, I really, you know, I was kind of disappointed because it's like people would vote for someone with no experience, one who, you know, said sexist comments, racist comments, and I didn't like how they, you know, touched on the city of Chicago during the debate, um, because we don't need to be making an example. We really need to be focused on coming up with solutions to help fight the crime that we are facing in the city. Um, I don't hate Trump. I just, you know, just feel that I don't hate him as a person. I just dislike his methods of things. And I feel like he comes in with the notion that, um, you know, you got money, you got everything. And that's what I kind of felt from the results of, of this election. But then a part of me also feel deep down that Hillary didn't win because she was a woman. And it was one thing to have the first African-American as a president, but, you know, it will be, an, it, I guess it's another thing to have the first woman president. So I kind of felt like the, maybe USA is not ready for a woman president per se, but... And as some people say, had Hillary been a male with her credentials, you know, she would have been, a, you know, been a beast. So, um, I'm just really, it's, it's just really still affecting people. Um, I, you know, end up, I had to take care of some business downtown in the city. One, um, maybe it was a day after, yeah, it was a day after the election. And I end up, you know, finding myself in, in the middle of a protest. So there were people camping out at the Trump Towers that's located in the Windy City. There were people going down Mission Avenue, to, uh, Mission Avenue saying um, Trump's got to go, um, trying to get petitions out to get them out. Um, you know, of course, they was chanting Black Lives Matter, um, Gay Rights Matter. Um, so that was taking place um, as well. It was a peaceful protest, and this, you know, what people were really surprised at, 
that majority of people who were out there protesting were non-minorities. Um, there were African Americans out there, there was Latinos out there, there was Asians out there, but the, the higher percentage of protesters were um, Caucasian. So they are still protesting. Here we are about to be a week later and they are still protesting. So I don't know, and this is just not a city of Chicago thing. This is across the country right now, L.A., um, New York, in which I think New York is where Trump actually lives. So it's, it's not, you know, really a piece, it's not really a good situation with this whole election right now. Um, I don't even remember people being this upset when um, Bush got elected or reelected. And it's just like, I don't remember it just, you know, being, being people was upset. It was just like, oh, he won. Oh, he won again. Okay, you know, back to work tomorrow at school. I think I, when, um, you know, Bush was doing his turns, I were in, doing his turns, I was in college, so... It was back to business as normal. So my take on this is that um, God has the final say so. He is the ruler over all things, not man. And all we can do is continue to work hard and be the best that we can be. And let's hold these political officials to the fire. Let's make them accountable. Uh, we vote these local people, the aldermen, the governors, the senator, um, the state's attorney. We need to hold these political uh, figures to the fire. That's how we get things accomplished. You know, some people want to just vote, sit back, kick their feet up and get a handout. But it just don't work like that. You got to put in some work. You got to do some actions in order for some things to happen. I like someone said, you know, no matter who the president is, continue to work hard, continue to give back, continue to be great in what you do. That's all you can do. So I guess we're gonna have to move on eventually. I am curious to see how this is gonna pan out. Because I felt when Obama got elected, it was really pandemonial. Everybody was just excited. I mean, there was some people mad. But I just felt like it was something different. People really tuning in to watch the inauguration. Both turns. And it was just like, wow. So, it'll be interesting to see um, how Trump is going to perform. It will be interesting to see, you know, maybe he might be that first president to get a one term. We don't know. Maybe he'll get up into the office and realize, you know what, I didn't bargain for all this. Um, and I'm curious to see what is his wife platform going to be, because I really believe the first lady is not a dummy. She, she got to be smart and she got to be able to hold her own outside the realm of, outside the realm of her husband. But, you know, we have a first lady now that, um, that got nudity pictures um, floating around. So all her former model nude shots are popping up. And, you know, when you think of a, a first lady of the United States of America, you're thinking a woman who's educated, who's classy, who will stay cover up and not have naked pictures. Um, one who is educated and one who's knowledgeable about world relations. You know, Michelle Obama was able to, you know, speak to world leaders as well as, you know, First Lady Bush. And uh, when Hillary was the First Lady, you, you got to Nancy Reagan. You all, these ladies had to have platforms and, you know, brought forth issues of concerns and they was doing their own, you know, works as the first lady so i'm interested to see but life goes on i hope you all are doing well i didn't intend one of my comeback i didn't intend for this to be my comeback video off my little few weeks hiatus but 
It's just something I want to talk about, but stay tuned. I'm going to give you guys what you want, and that's the what's in my bags, and I got some new stuff as well, so that's it. That's all. Come on, help me get to a 500 subscribers so I can do this giveaway. Peace out. Take care. Be blessed, and God bless America.